best blight court Karen story that I have to tell you about something my husband and I saw happened in Detroit blight court this week. I have another story about an obstinate owner, but none of these stories are going to make any sense to you if you don't understand what Detroit blight tickets are. In this video, you're going to learn quickly what they are, how to behave in blight court, how not to behave, how to handle these blight tickets, and a little bit about who I am, but let's get into the video. First of all, if you don't mind, please like, comment, subscribe, share. It's super helpful to me. It's very inspiring for me to give you more videos with more of this really valuable information that took us a long time to learn all these things. By the way, you can always go to the, this, the line right here and do chapters if you wanna skip ahead like if you want to skip right to my Karen story. I'm Monique Burns. My husband and I are from Detroit, Michigan. We have some of our own investment properties. In 2015, we started flipping properties and selling them to investors from all over the country and all over the world. In order to support all those uh, purchases that we sold these people these houses, we had a property management company. We did so well with that, that by 2020, we were able to have scaled it up and sold the company. So I'm no longer in property management but we are still flipping houses and we're kind of winding down. Check out my website and see what I have for sale. Let's get into what, do you, what am I even talking about? Let's do the 101 version about blight tickets. In the city of Detroit, in order to get a certificate of compliance called a C of C, which means that the city says, yes, you are allowed to be a landlord in our beautiful city of Detroit, which now is beautiful. Actually, if you haven't been here lately, you really need to check it out and investment opportunities are amazing. In order to be compliant in the city of Detroit, you have to do just three things. One, you have to go online and register and go to my blog because finding that button where to register is the hardest part of registering and it costs nothing. And you just put in the address of who the owner is and who the property manager is so that they can send you tickets, right? And then two, you have to get a lead test. This is the part nobody likes because it's around 500 bucks. You have to go through the house, make sure it's all compliant, that there are basically no chip paint. Three, you have to call the city inspector to come out. They have outside companies that do it or the city will do it. I found that out recently too, which is part of my story, right? My last story. The city comes out and they just check or the outside inspectors that you can hire through the city come out and they inspect the house and they just come up with some really basic safety issues Nothing too major, unless you're a slumlord, then you're in trouble. Yeah. Right before we sold our property management company, we sold a house, and I'll let you see the video. I did a, a final video of it. Uh, um, a really nice house. It was all fully renovated and uh, freshly painted. You can see in that video if you wanna go look at it. But the owner, you know, when we sold it, we did not have the certificate of compliance. And the owner knew that, and his property manager knew that they needed to get the house under compliance. So the first step the new property manager needed to do was register the house because that meant all tickets would come to me. And this was two and a half years ago. And so sure enough, it didn't happen right. Something went wrong with his property manager and his property manager must not have ever registered this property because the tickets started coming in for the house not having been registered, not having a lead paint test, not having the city certification. The, the ticket amount for not registering is $250. How stupid. It's only, it's free. You just go online and you register. You should never get a ticket for not registering a house. The minute you own a house, you go on and you register it. The ticket for not having a lead paint test done is $500. And then if you, if the city, the city keeps re-ticketing. So if they notice that you didn't do it, they'll send another ticket. But instead of it being the, the lead test being 500, then it's $580. So it's a real problem. People really need to get this done. And um, when you, re when they register the house, they give you a certain amount of days. I better put the number up here because I don't remember it off the top of my head. To then go get the lead paint test and get that done. So I sold the house. These things were not done knowingly. And I forwarded, I scanned the tickets to the new owner. I'm like, uh-oh, you know, this is what you need to do. I shouldn't be telling him this. His property manager should be telling him this, right? Well, the at the same time, there was a city, a tenant complaint that the new property manager wasn't doing maintenance. 
So the city sent out a city inspector to this guy's house and they found things wrong with the house. Well, it turns out the tenant that I placed wasn't good. She ended up moving in like everyone in her bloodline and they were doing really bad damage to the house. So my husband went and checked it out and he saw the situation. He's like, whoa, bad tenants. If any property manager tells you, I only place really good tenants, I'm telling you, they have not placed that many tenants. <laughs> you know, when, you, when you get volume, you can check every checkbox off and sometimes you're going to get a bad tenant. So uh, my husband assessed the situation and he told the guy, he's like, listen, this is what you got to do. Get rid of those tenants. Go do whatever the city is saying. And once all that's done, it'll be easier to get the lead paint test and the city inspection. You do it all when the house is empty. It's so much easier. Well, that is not how this obstinate owner reacted. Instead, he started being very rude on the phone to me and telling me that I need to pay for all this. I need to pay for all the repairs. I need to pay for all the city tickets. And my husband needs to do all the work for free because you sold me a bad house, Monique. I'm like, oh my gosh. So we were clear with him. That's not how it works. Your property manager was supposed to have handled this stuff and not let it get out of control. This is two, two and a half, I don't know, two years ago, let's say, that this happened. So then I kept getting these tickets and they kept coming. And it got very time consuming for me to keep scanning these and sending to these tickets to him. And every time I would email him the tickets, I would get the same phone call. Monique, you sold us a bad house. You need to pay for all this stuff. How dare you put me in this situation? And I'm like, um, let me review. This is how it works. So the last time my husband got the mail, he almost didn't give me the tickets. He said, Monique, I don't know why. Why do you keep sending him the tickets? You've done everything you can. You've told him everything. So I'm going to ask all of you. I got the tickets again. Do I take my time and scan them and send them to him? knowing he's going to call and be rude to me or email me and be like, you need to do all this for free for me. Or do I just put those tickets in the shredder? I don't even know what to do. So now I can get into my Karen story because it's going to make sense to you now. Uh, but before I get into it, I'll tell you why we were in, in Blight Court. I made a video about it. It's right here. We bought a house with a tenant in it. And we were trying to renovate the house with her in it. And she got bossy boss on us. Really difficult to work with. And in the process, she called the city on us, much like this obstinate owner got the city called on him. And the city came out, Mohammed, he came out, um, the inspector for the city of Detroit, and he looked it over and he wrote up some things that we needed to repair. So we were like, okay, that's enough. We've got to just get this tenant out. So all you tenants that are watching, heads up, you could get evicted if you are not working it out with your landlord. Now, granted, sometimes there are times where you should call the city on your landlord if they are true slumlords, but a landlord that's actually renovating your house while you're in it and you're not making it easy for them, and then you go call the city, that's probably not gonna go well for you. So we got her out of the house, we did the full renovation, and Mohammed came back, he saw we did all the repairs, um, we got it registered, we got the lead paint test, um, and Mohammed at, at this time was the city inspector, which was cool. We got him back and he's like, wow, it's so nice to see a house that looks this good. He said, usually I'm out there fighting the slumlords, but this is great. I'm so happy. But we still had to appear in court because the first time Mohammed came, we were mid renovation. We were going to call to get a lead test before we had painted the house. And we were going to call for a city inspector before we were done doing all our stuff in the house, knowing that the city inspection was going to call stuff out anyway. We didn't want a, a mile long list from the city. So we, we did get those two tickets. So let me tell you, so we, we the court now, the Blake courts are all online and um, it, it's a Zoom meeting. They give you this number and they say, call in. So we called in and it's, you can see the different people that are, that have their tickets called. And so Karen was before us oh. and she, she's a property manager. The judge is there and she's in her little square and Karen's in her square. And the judge says, raise your right hand. Do you swear firm? That's when you're about to give, will be the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll help you out. Yes, Karen says, yes. Okay, well, Mohammed, I see that you issued tickets. Yeah, yes, Your Honor, I did issue tickets. Uh, it was registered, but we do not have the lead paint test and we do not have the city inspection report done. And Karen's like, um, well, that is because I don't, I have been trying to give them to you and nobody is giving me the right information. And the judge says, okay, Karen, um, the address that was given 
on the registration is blah, blah, blah. Is that your address? <laughs> no, that is not my address. So how am I supposed to send you anything if I am not even the one that is even getting these tickets? It's amazing that I even got the notification to even appear here today because of I, I, all these tickets and I don't even know where to send my lead test and we have it, but how am I supposed to know? I'm trying to give it to you guys. And so the judge says, okay, Karen, well, that's great. You did the lead test. Can you please do a, a screen share and show us the lead test? So here's a hot tip, you guys. Be ready to do a screen share. If you have anything, that's what they want you to do. They want you to share the screen. And Karen's like, well, uh, uh, no, I, I don't. And the judge says, so you did not come to this prepared? No, I did not. And so the judge says, well, we don't have the lead test and we don't have the city test. So I am issuing you a ticket for $580 for the missing lead test and 250, which I think goes up like if, after a certain amount of time. I don't know the numbers. I'm issuing these tickets for not having a lead test and not having the city inspection test. And Karen says, um, excuse me. And the judge is like, yes. Uh, I, I didn't even get to make my case or anything. I mean, this isn't right. And the judge is like, well, we just gave you your chance. And she said, I need to speak with your supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> and the judge said, ah, uh, there's not a supervisor. She said, well, then I want to go to a judge about this because I thought there was going to be a hearing. And the judge said, I am the judge. I am now issuing you the tickets. <laughs> and then it was our turn and we get on and my husband right, right away good morning and the judge oh you know some manners good morning <laughs> calling case number blah 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 blah. and Mohammed who's the inspector really appreciated going to our house and he totally saw the situation and when he came back the second time he said yeah I realized that you were in a tough situation because that tenant was not helping you get anything done to do that house and I could see that you were trying so I fully saw that situation and these inspectors they know what's going on you don't have to hide from them you have to own your own guilt in whatever the guilt is to be had I mean we had to hurry up and get the lead test and we had to get the city test and I would have bypassed that if I had a tenant with section 8 that's what I talked about in the other video is that you can use a uh, section eight past report instead of getting the lead test and the city test. So watch, watch that and see a tour of that house that Mohammed inspected. But Mohammed, so the judge, as soon as she called us, the Mohammed got to speak and he said, I call that we dismiss this case because the house is fully done and it's fully compliant. And I've already mailed the certificate of compliance to Mr. Burns. And the judge was like, Oh, we really, she said to my husband, we really appreciate you getting in compliance with the city. Thank you. And my husband's like, yeah, have a great day. She's like, oh, thank you. And it was quite peaceful. We got through it and the tickets got dismissed. And that is how you handle tickets in Detroit. You just do what they say and do it in the time frame they say and be polite. Thanks for watching.